Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today, I appreciate it. Today I'm gonna go ahead and share with you all the workflow and process that I take to go ahead and create massive size stencils. Now for this specifically, I'm going to be showing you all the application that I take to make a stencil for an entire back piece. Now this application can be used for like, it can be used for thigh pieces on down to the ankle. It can be used to make chest pieces as well. I'll show you basically the entire workflow and process that I take here. And I'm gonna just try and shed as much light as I can going over all of the details. I had recently released a video of me tattooing a massive size Yolong silicone fake skin slab. Upon doing so, I put a dragon on there and I got a lot of questions on people asking me how I made a stencil that big. So I decided to go ahead and make this video for you all for those who are wondering so that way you can go ahead and mimic this at home should you choose to do so. So without further ado, let's proceed and get right on into this. So for me personally, I take the digital approach to make stencils. I use a thermal printer and I use an iPad to go ahead and achieve this. So I'm gonna be using the iPad. I'm going to be using my Toex stencil printer and you're gonna need four sheets of spirit stencil paper. That's what I am using. So as you see, four sheets right here. So the size of the stencil is essentially gonna be these four like so. And I'm gonna show you how to make the image so that way we can blow it up correctly and then we can piece it all back together, cut it out. We're gonna go through the entire nine right here together. So where I begin first and foremost, we're going to need a design the design that we're going to be using for this video right here is going to be this Zeus design right here. And I'm gonna show you all how I would create this to put on a back, so to speak. We're gonna be tattooing the other side of the Yolong with this design. For this video, I'll stick to creating the massive size stencil. I'll make another video and show you all how I would go about uh, tattooing massive size tattoos. So one step at a time. With the design, we can go ahead and do what we need with it. So once you have the design done, I'm going to simply copy the layer and I'm going to put it on its own platform. Now, this is basically where things uh, may get tricky for you. So the dimensions of this design right now is currently at the same dimensions of the stencil paper. So what I do is essentially just kind of take that dimension and I add it all up to create one size dimension that I need. And the settings or the uh, dimensions that I'm gonna be using to create the massive size stencil is going to be 17 by 22. And as you see right here, this is it right here. So this is going to be 17 by 22 inch uh, platform that we're working with, is, which is pretty massive if you ask me. Okay, so we have this right here. So this is the dimensions in which we want to work with. I'm going to add a new layer, but take it out of that group. And then I'm going to place that Zeus stencil right here. So as you can see, it's only the size of essentially one of these papers. So right here, we have four, di four different uh, spirit stencil papers. What I typically do is I bring it to the corner and then I just kind of max it out as big as I can get it. So that looks good to me. So once I get it maxed out to these dimensions, keep in mind now, we do have four different spare, uh, spare stencil papers here now. What I'm gonna do is I want to pay attention to the details here to make sure that I'm not going to cut off important details. So I want to adjust this accordingly and meticulously place this in somewhere where there's not so much detail because you see right here this line going through the middle we're going to slip that here shortly and i'm going to show you how i do that so i like this placement a lot better than the prior keep in mind the skin kind of curves in so the hair and everything is, may not be on the skin so we have the one design right here i'm actually going to zoom in and i'm going to grab my eraser tool and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to test to see how big the eraser is so that's a little bit too big for my liking there. I'm going to find a nice little spot that I can use a thin, thin spot. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in all the way. As you can see, this is the thickness that I'm going to be using to slip my stencil up right here. So what I'm gonna do with this one layer is we're going to cut it into four different dimensions here. So I'm just going to trace as best I can from here to here, making one straight cohesive line. And then I'm gonna just line it up as best as I can. One. Another. So now 
this stencil right here is divided into four different pieces. So if I were to grab this stencil and I move it around up close, there's a cross right there. Very subtle, and that's what we want. We, we don't wanna be able to tell that there's actually a cross there. So what we're gonna do now from here is, now we duplicate this four times. And I'm gonna work my way from the top to the bottom of these four. This one's gonna be the first layer, the second one's gonna be this one, the third one's gonna be this layer over here, and the fourth one's gonna be this one, if that makes sense. And how I get rid of them is I go like this. So I'm gonna bring this down. And before I get rid of what I need, I'm gonna zoom in and you see this line right here? I'm going to bring this line and line it up to the very edge right there. I'm going to lock it in play. And now it's removing everything that we essentially do not need. And then after that, I'm going to do the same thing over here because this one's gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna zoom it in first before I get rid of what I don't need. And I'm just gonna do this to the best of my ability here, like so. So as you see, now we have one piece. So this is going to be one spirit stencil paper. And then we're going to repeat this process until we are done and have every single piece on its own individual part. So that was the first part. The second part, we're gonna do this square. So we're kind of, we're gonna click on that layer and then we're just gonna repeat that process like so. Now I know this may not be absolutely perfect, but it's okay. This is how we divide everything up. And then I'm just going to bring it down. And then from this point, since I need this part over here, I'm going to bring it this way. And then you see this line right here. Remember we wanna line this line up with the edge. Like so. And then from this point, I can put this back up here. And then what I can do is begin to check if these are lining up correctly. I'm gonna put this one right in the middle. And then let me move over to the other layer. Bring it to the middle. It does look as though everything is lining up nice, as you see. So now it looks like one full image, but we have two different stencils right here. So these are two different sheets so far, two different stencil papers. We're gonna repeat that process two more times with this one. We're going to get this part over here. So we're kind of just gonna repeat that process in reverse. And then I zoom in to make sure that I can line it up as best as I can. Then I'm going to bring this this way. And I'm just making sure when I'm moving them, I'm just making sure that I don't go past this line right here. So that's why I zoom it in. And I use this line to line it up with the edge. If you've noticed that, that's how I'm doing it. So I'll just stop right around there. And what that does is that removes the rest of the artwork and it creates one nice stencil right here for me to transfer over this way, as you see. And then I'm going to line it up with these other two just to make sure that everything is lining up and we're doing this correctly. Uh, let's see here. Yep, everything's looking great. Everything's lining up nice. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process one last time. And we're gonna get this last part over here. So with that being said, 
going to go this way and I'm just making sure again that I don't go past the lines so as you see if I zoom in we have the lines right here I'm going to start this way first actually I should bring it down that way and then I'm gonna go back and then remove the rest of this like so and then now we have the last part of our stencil and then I'm going to just simply line it up with the rest to make sure that everything is cohesive and copacetic bear with me here this one's gonna go right around here allow me to zoom in So there we have it, everything lines up right. I know there's a little line there, but I am completely okay with that. I'm not trying to get this perfect. I just want to make sure that I can get a stencil that I can actually work with. And let me realign that up. And as you can see, this is definitely a nice stencil to work with. So now we have the entire Zeus stencil in a group right here. And each of these squares is a spirit stencil paper. Now, from this point forward, we want to go ahead and we want to transfer this onto one specific setting. So we want to move this entire unit over to one specific paper here that's 8.5 by 11, which is the size of the spirit stencil paper. So just to reiterate, Right now, the dimensions of the current design that we made are the size of the back tattoo. However, we don't have a printer that prints that size, so we're gonna have to print four sheets, if that makes sense. So to do so, what I typically do is I'm going to, instead of copying the entire group and pasting them, I'm gonna paste them, paste them one by one. So I'm going to copy. So I'm gonna get the first layer, and then I'm going to paste it. Bear with me. And then I'm gonna go back over. Then I'm gonna get the second layer, copy. And then we're gonna take it back over here, make a new layer, and then we're going to paste it. And then we're gonna go back over here. And again, this is just the way that I approach it. Copy. And it is a bit of a task. However, again, we are, we're making a uh, massive stencil, so. Paste right there. And everything kind of locks into place as you see for me. I don't have to do much there. And then the last one, we're gonna copy, take it back, get a new layer, and then paste. Hopefully it all lines up. Beautiful, so everything lined up perfectly. What I can do here is move them all together now, right here. Uh, this one. So we have them all in one spot together. What I'm going to do is regroup them. So that way I can kind of move them all in unison together. And as you see, we're now grouped together. And then now I'm going to resize these to the size of this specific stencil paper, which is going to be... So as you see right here, we have clouds. So we can kind of cut that cloud out. We don't really need that cloud. Because if you go and look, it's just a cloud right there. So we can kind of get a little bit more detail. If we sacrifice a little bit of cloud there, a little bit of the cloud. So I'm gonna size them up as best as I can to the entire paper. You know, that's gonna be subjective, give or take. I'm just gonna move them all a little bit down in case it decides to print all the way up. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of information here now. So now we're at the point where we can start sending this information on over to the printer so that way it actually prints and then we can go ahead and begin to cut them up and stick them together. So now what I'm going to do is just one layer at a time. I'm gonna go, I export. 
as PNG. I just use PNG format. And then I'm going to go to save image. And then I'm gonna repeat that process. PNG, save image with all of the layers right here. PNG, save image. And then the last one, save image. So now we have Z4 files that we need to go ahead and print to the stencil. Everything is lined up. And to my understanding right now, everything should line up correctly when we print it. Of course, the stencil is not going to be 100% perfect, but it will be pretty close to it. So let's proceed. We're going to set up the printer and then we will print out the four so that way we can go ahead and get to building this actual stencil. Okay, so we are now set up and ready to print. I'm going to get the first spirit stencil paper and load it into the printer. Like so. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to print them in order like so. And then I'm going to hit print. So from here, I'm just going to fast forward the print. And we'll get to where we're going. So you can see his hand's almost the size of mine. <laughs> it's probably actually bigger than mine. So as you see, we have the first paper printed. This is the first stencil and it looks great. This is pretty nice so far. So let's proceed accordingly and we're going to repeat the process until we have all of the necessary parts that we need. So here is a second piece with part of his face going there or going on there. We're going to continue until we have the next two done. And this is going to be the third piece. When I'm holding it, I'm not pulling it at all. I'm just kind of guiding it. I'm not pulling it or pulling any extra pressure I just let it do its own thing So as you can see, this is the next component. And then we have the last part. Just making sure the thermal printer is still cool. And this is the last one we sent to print.
and this is the last piece right here as you can see so now what i can go ahead and do is i'm going to remove this right here and make some space so i can bring back the stencils and show you all what we're going to do next so now we are back we're at the part where we're ready to go ahead and kind of divide these up and check them out here so let's just lay them out this is going to be i guess down here maybe this is going to go over here and right here so as you see this is the layout for the stencil as you can see it's not lined up or anything what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to trim out the excess that we don't need here and to do that i'm just going to use some scissors i like to actually remove the carbon right here prior to cutting so as you see the thermal did a nice job on printing everything i like to take this out of the paper here So that way, when I cut with the scissors, it doesn't leave anything around there. I like to do that with all of them. I guess I necessarily didn't have to do it with this one because I had a lot of excess at the top. So what I can do is I can just put that back there. And cut right here across. Might as well just leave it out at this point <laughs> okay so we're gonna go ahead and just cut across like so and then we get rid of the excess but you get my drift with the carbon there what i was trying to prove or point out point out there and then the same thing for this right here i'm going to remove this and the reason why i removed the carbon is because when i would cut around the edges it leaves a purple line around and i'm not a big fan of that i don't like for there to be a line when i cut and then i'm just going to repeat that with all of them now this is optional you don't have to remove your card carbon paper if you choose not to i am for this demonstration so again the point of doing that is so that way when we do start cutting, there's no purple line on the rim of the paper. So now we're at the point where we can just go ahead and start clean cutting everything. This is a very important step in which we want to take our time on. So I'm really going to focus in and take my time on cutting this. I'm going to actually trim this excess because when I cut it, I did cut it with the carbon on top. So I don't want that excess carbon right there that you see on my stencil. So I have I have the paper, the yellow paper, just kind of as a reinforcement. It makes it easier for me to cut. So I'm just going to simply cut along the line this way. As I see it, I do have a little bit of carbon on these stencils. I'm just going to get some alcohol, clean it off on the napkin here. As there is a little bit of carbon on the scissors and I don't need that on the cut here. So I'm going to trim along the edge without cutting into the stencil. So I'm just going to leave a little excess line there just to ensure that I am not cutting into the actual stencil and then I ruin it. And I don't want to go too out either. So this is just a real patient game here where we have to just kind of cut correctly. Just basic fill stuff. So we have that piece that's ready to be taped and connected. And then I'm going to repeat that process with everything here until I get everything cut out. Now you see how there's like free space right here. I really don't worry about that, but I'm just going to try and line it up and cut as best I can still there. If it doesn't line up, that's okay. But you still, you don't want to cut into the stencil. So that's still important. That's not okay if you cut into the stencil. Don't cut into the stencil if you can, if it happens, just, you know, proceed accordingly as best as you can. And then there's a last cut right here. It looks as though it's going that way. So I have one part right there, and that's one part that's ready to be connected. Again, I'm going to repeat this process until I have all the components free and ready to be connected. And you see how it has like a little 
a little hump right here you want to try and cut it as straight as you possibly can get it so that way when you tape it it, it doesn't cause any issues because those will make it a little bit more difficult to really get a good taping going and this one's a little bit further away from the line than i would like it but it is what it is we're going to keep going with it it's not too too bad either i would rather have it more away from the line than cutting into the stencil so we're okay right now and then for this over here this one's going to be down here so there is no end however i'm going to just simply cut this way though so that way i get rid of the excess over here and then i'm going to cut this off as well I think I'll feel a bit more comfortable cutting it this way. So we have another component right there, ready to go. And then that one would connect with this one once we cut this little piece off down here. And again, I'm really just taking my time um, using what I learned in grade school to not mess up my stencil here. And again, when we tape it together, there's gonna be a little cross line in the middle, but that's perfectly fine. I'm okay with that. Um, I can still tattoo everything just fine with that little line in the middle it doesn't take away from the stencil the stencil is still 100 percent readable okay and then we're just going to do this side as well and i want to just kind of line it up as best i can making sure that I do my best not to cut in to the stencil. So if I'm a little bit off frame, forgive me, I apologize. I'm just really tuned in to not messing this up here. Okay, so we got another good one down, another good component. We just need one more to go here. I'm going to just kind of just trim this straight across. As I don't need this up here. So as you can see, that one goes right here and then you know, we'll line it up manually here shortly. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape there. So we have these three components. And then we're going to repeat this. So hopefully we, we will get this last one. I'm gonna put it out there. We will get it, be confident. Safety first and teamwork. So I'm just making sure that I cut this evenly as best as I can. Very nice. And I believe that is the, oh, actually no, we have to cut this part right here as well. So it is a bit of work creating massive size stencils. And it also is a lot of work tattooing massive sized tattoos. So I feel like if you're creating massive sized stencils, then you probably already know what to expect. Overall though, this is the components here. I wonder if this piece cut evenly here. Let me see. Oh, we're good there. And then this part is gonna go over here. And then this part is going to go right here. Well, let me move it a little bit down so it doesn't fall off the screen. So as you can see here, now we have this large size stencil. Let me move it more down. I apologize, I didn't see that. I wasn't looking at the camera. 
So there we have it. Now we have all the components that we need to begin taping this stencil together. As you can see, it is another massive size stencil. So let's go ahead and proceed to taping these together and actually building this stencil. Now, building this stencil, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use just some 3M cloth-like tape here. Uh, it's a micro pore 3M tape. That's what we're gonna use. And we're just gonna use small amounts of it to tape everything together here. And I will show you exactly how I do that. So I'm going to start small. I'm going to begin with this part right here. And then we're going to tape this. Once we get this lined up nice and neat the way we need it, we're going to proceed and do that with the top part. Now, um, upon putting the stencils together, you may need to adjust and remove some excess uh, stencil here and there. That's completely fine. Do as needed. Shouldn't be too much of a difference. So right around there is where I want it. That looks about correct to me. As you see, there is little gaps in between, but again, this is a massive size back piece. We can literally go back with like a little Sharpie or something to this extent to correct that issue. So I'm grabbing a 3M piece of tape, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear it this way. And that creates a little slit for me right here. And then what I'm going to do is with this tape, I'm going to just simply tape it down the spine making sure that I can get this as straight and lined up as I possibly can. So I'm going to do that all the way through. So I have a little joint there, a little, you know, it's jointed now, so we can proceed. And then I'm going to do that one more time with the top area of this. like so and then I want to also tape this right here as well so I'm going to proceed and do that as well forgive me for the camera shaking I'm actually taping the excess to the camera pole here so that's how I have that right there. So we have one component now built and put together you can even tape this down here I don't see why we wouldn't just simply going to try and line it up as close as possible and place it over like so so here is one piece now done that's great we're going to repeat that process with this top part and then we're going to join these two parts together and then once we have the two sections we'll put them together in the middle so I'm going to move this component up here And then we're going to proceed with this one right here to build this here. And then I'm going to move them to one so it's easier to work with for me. That seems about correct to me. So I'm gonna repeat that process. I'm gonna get another little piece of 3M porous tape here. And it could be any soft tape that you use on your, and it doesn't have to be this one. This is just the one that I use. Uh, I use this one because if I were to mess up and place the tape incorrectly, I can simply pull it off without it causing little to no damage to my stencil, which is very, very important to me because there's a series of steps that we have to take to get a big stencil like this and a lot can go wrong. So using better equipment or better, you know, tools like this is the way to go. So I just thought I'd show you all which one I'm using. Okay, so we have that part done here and this part is linked. I'm also going to connect this part right here. The edges right here that link, I'm, I wanna make sure that I connect those as well so that way 
it's not loose in the middle. We have a full tight image there and there's no loose floating components. Like there's not big gaps is what I'm really referring to. As close to the edge as I can. So very, very nice. We have this component now done as well. So as you can see, the stencil is going to make out. We'll have a little line in the middle. However, again, we can just kind of fill everything in. That's not a big deal at all. My dragon was exactly like that too. So now from this point forward, we're going to connect these two components into one and that would officially be how we would create this large stencil right here so we are just about home free we just need to correctly connect this one and we're not home free until we're home free so let's make sure that we can connect this correctly here together and then i'm going to find a comfortable place here and just begin lining it up per usual as best as i can and i'm already liking the way that that one's lining up so i'm going to grab my tape my tape and then I'm going to tape this down I shot it a little bit too that way so that's okay I can use this one to rejoin it right there and then I'm going to repeat that process again and I'm going to join everything right here in the middle to give me more stability for the rest of everything very nice so as you see that's good it's coming out great this is a good sign here and then I'm going to grab one last piece here so that we can tape everything real nice and neat and make sure that this stencil won't come apart upon us using this stencil here So as you see, I'm just literally filling in all of these blanks right here. Just like that. And then I'm going to just put one last piece of the tape right here to join that last section over here because I, I do want to close it off. I don't want it to be loose in any areas where it can move open. Like so, very nice. So everything is good. So as you can see, we made it. We are now done with the Zeus stencil right here. Everything looks cohesive and lined up. Let's turn it over and take a look at it. So there you all have it. That is great. Again, we apply it. We're just gonna go over and kind of fill in the blanks here with the cross, but there you all have it. This is the massive size stencil that I will be using to tattoo on the other side of the Yolong silicone slab. So be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for that video. But as you can see, this tattoo is bigger than both of my hands. It is a full size back piece. So I'm very happy with the results. I'm very happy that I can share my process with you all here on camera. Yet again, if I didn't touch base on anything specific at any point throughout this video that you may have wanted to know, please feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. If you're not, be sure to give me a follow on social media. I have social medias all under the same name at Daniel Yuck, D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I would genuinely appreciate the support. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me yet again, as I will be bringing more videos like this. You can go ahead and see me tattoo this entire tattoo as well. Yet again, I genuinely appreciate your support. You have a great day.